We were just talking about disease resistance, but one of the other resistance issues that we have now, unfortunately, is with soybean aphids. There have been a lot of soybean aphids found in Minnesota, for example, and North Dakota that are resistant to some of the pyrethroid insecticides that we commonly use. So we wanted to talk today just a little bit about newer mode of action, or a couple different ones actually. We've got Safina, and then there's also Transform. Could these products be the things you should be using for soybean aphid control on your farm? And if not, what else is there? Well, here you go, Brian. There, there have been two really popular choices for aphid control. One has been use a cheap pyrethroid, and the second one has been, well, let's use old lore's bin. Now, old lore's bin works great. It wipes out those aphids quickly. I love that. If I've got a heavy infestation, that's my number one recommendation, or at least it has been over the years. But again, the pyrethids have gotten so cheap that they kind of got over, well, not kind of, they really did get overused. So I'd say Lors Band might be a real easy option for many growers to switch to. I mentioned these two new products out there, Safina and Transform. Here are the great things about them. Number one, they're pretty safe to humans and animals, the environment in general. Number two, they are very easy on a lot of the beneficial insects. So many people will talk about bee kills or let's say ladybugs, for example. Well, these things aren't gonna kill the lady bugs out in the field. That's awesome. But here's the problem with them. They cost a little more money. The next problem is they don't kill many of the other bugs that are out there that you would like controlled, like let's say grasshoppers or bean leaf beetles. The other problem, Brian, with those products, and I love those products, they're just not labeled in every crop. And we talked about soybean aphids, but aphids are really a problem in wheat, in alfalfa, corn leaf aphids. I tell you what, that's one that we're going to have to talk more about because that was a real problem this year and led to some shank issues on corn hybrids. But, but there's aphids all over in almost every crop I can think of. So do check the labels on these products and look for other products with these active ingredients that may be labeled in the crops you raise. So usually when we're talking about aphids, really in any crop, we start with what's the least expensive way I can control them. That's why we talk so much about the pyrethroids. And I will just tell you on our farm, we have no aphids that are resistant to the pyrethroids that I know of. All the aphids have died, it's worked out great. So I can go out there for $2 an acre, that's awesome, super, super cheap, and I can get every aphid under control, plus I can kill almost any other bug that I'm after. That's great. Now, if you want to use multiple effective modes of action, like for me and my farm, I might combine the Lors band together with a pyrethroid. But here's the thing, pyrethroid costs about two bucks, Lors band costs about four bucks. Then you go to Transform and Safina, they cost about six bucks. Well, when, when Transform first came out, probably five, six years ago, I thought a lot of farmers would jump on that product because it didn't kill the beneficial insects that everybody was constantly complaining about. Well, I don't know that I want to spray because it kill these beneficials. Okay, we got something for you that'll kill the aphids and not the beneficials. And then people said, well, I really don't want to spend $4 an acre more, so just give me the pyrethroid. <laughs> Look, you've got all the options there. It's up to you what you want to do on your farm. Again, the big thing that I would look at, number one, is can I kill the pest? And number two, do I have multiple effective modes of action? Number three is, am I doing the right thing for any possible beneficials that may be out there? Well, the cost has certainly been one part of that discussion, Brian, and, and one part of the product choice for many farmers. But here's the other one that I've heard. Well, I'm going to mix it with this fertilizer, or I'm going to mix it with this herbicide. I know I can put the pyrethroid in there and it's not gonna heat up my mix. And I know in the past when I put Lors Band in there, for example, it did heat up my mix. I don't wanna burn the crop at all, so I'm a little nervous about that. Uh, these new products, they don't look to have the burn that we saw with Lors Band, but certainly this is a concern for you. If you're mixing different things together, you have to look at that entire mix and what's going to happen. Well, once again, there are a lot of aphids out there in many different crops. For us, soybean aphid's been number one, but like Darren said, corn leaf aphid has been a growing concern here in the last few years. And the big thing that I would tell you is we're trying to get higher yields. Then a lot of times your in insect threshold actually is going to go lower because even a little bit of insect damage can prevent you from going to 85 instead of 80 bushels on soybeans or let's say 300 bushel corn instead of 280. I mean, you really have to look at every last little thing that's out there and bug problems are a major issue. So just make sure you're scouting on your farm. If you're finding aphid thresholds, make sure you're spraying and using effective modes of action. Well, aphids are certainly a tough competitor out in the field. Our Weed of the Week is as well. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next.